So one of the big trends this year is going to be wearable AI tech. And already some of the stuff is hitting the market and it's getting mixed reactions, shall we say? We've heard about the Rabbit R1 device. We've heard about the Humane AI pin that didn't receive the warmest reception. But here's one that might be interesting. This is the Limitless Pendant. Here's the quick five second pitch. I've got something really exciting to show you. Allow me to introduce you to the Limitless Pendant. Today we're introducing Limitless. It is a web app, a Mac app, a Windows app, and a wearable. Limitless is a personalized AI powered by what you've seen, said, or heard. Limitless augments, not replaces, human intelligence with artificial intelligence to overcome the brain's limitations, specifically our memory and our focus. Our brains are bombarded with notifications and information. Multitasking is a myth. We can only really do one thing at a time. I'm in back-to-back -back meetings, and I want to be 100% focused on the person I'm meeting with. Taking notes, tracking action items, and preparing for the next meeting all prevent me from connecting with the person right in front of me. Now let's pause it for just a quick second. So the website is limitless.ai and it looks like a lot of the functionality is already available. It's the pin that's gonna be the latest addition or the pendant rather. Here's what that pendant looks like. And of course there's tons of questions about privacy. How are people gonna react to it? I mean, if you're talking to somebody and they know they're being recorded on your little thing, you know, is that gonna be a natural flow of conversation? You know how in movies they'll ask them, like, are you wearing a wire? And then the next second you see him flying out the window or being shoved in the trunk of a car, right? Would something like this cause situations uh, similar to that? Here they do have multiple options for protecting your privacy, both by just using it as an on-device sort of thing, but also as having it as a confidential kind of private cloud. They'll give you the same functionality as you would have with a cloud, but you're only able to connect with one device. So it's not like everyone can just connect to your data. And for me personally, at first, I was a little bit dismissive of stuff like this because I wasn't sold an idea of something that's just recording me all day, tracking all my conversations. I was more interested in having agents that are capable of doing something on my behalf. So something like the R1 device was, I thought a lot cooler. I was a lot more excited about that because you speak to it like a walkie talkie, you go, hey, book a flight for me or fire off this email or whatever. Well, that was much more exciting. If you caught my video yesterday, halfway through it, I stopped the video recording because I needed to take a break. I come back, I sit down in front of the camera and I thought I clicked the recording button to start that over again, but I didn't. So I ended up talking for like an hour to myself. And then this idea occurred to me that it would be helpful to have something like this with maybe the capabilities or the functionality of something like a coach that can kind of monitor your actions and maybe remind you about things, right? You might have a list that says, you know, buy batteries on it. But after it's been sitting on that to-do list for a while, you just kind of start ignoring it, right? You know when it would be extremely useful to be reminded about buying batteries is when you're at the store next to the battery section. Now let's come back to the limitless device in just a second. Because again, a lot of these devices, they're kind of the first generation devices of this functionality. So as more people keep trying different stuff, as users get their hands on them and get feedback about it, these things are going to get better, evolve. And I think as we start to wrap our minds around this, we'll find more and more use cases where something like this will be very, very useful to us. As the AI vision is getting better, as the speed at which you can talk to you gets better, some people suggested having something like, for example, for Dota 2, this video game where the AI it watches what you're doing on screen and kind of coaches you as you're going through it. It's whispering in your ear through the headphones going, oh, watch out for this. But my point here is that the recording and being able to ask questions, that kind of wearable AI, that's the first step of the evolution. Right, so it's basically something that records plus something like ChatGPT where you can ask it questions. That's cool, but it's important to understand that really where it gets kind of exciting, maybe even a little bit scary, is that next evolution, the agent evolution, where it's not just recording and then, you know, searching, answering questions. It's taking certain live actions on your behalf, either by telling you what you need to know in that particular moment, giving you certain suggestions, reminders, maybe connecting to your calendar, just putting stuff on your calendar, potentially being even kind of a safety monitor of sorts, perhaps. I mean, if you ever run into any trouble, you know, your car flips over, you can't get out. It can kind of maybe one, do things on your behalf without your needing to say anything. Like it can observe the situation, say, oh, it looks like 
you're in trouble. Let me call the first responders, see if they can help you out. If you've ever been hiking to various remote areas, sometimes the guides or, you know, there'll be a sign somewhere before you enter the park, they'll tell you, like, they'll be like, this animal is, might be dangerous. If you see it, you should try to scare it. Try to appear as big as possible and yell at it, right? And then some other animal, it's like, never scare this animal. Do not try to appear big and intimidating. Like, just kind of cower and hope for the best, right? And, uh... I always wondered if one of those animals appeared on a hiking trail, will you remember? Like, am I supposed to try to scare it <laughs> or definitely not scare it? But the point is that the possibilities for these things are massive, right? So right now, as we're looking at it, I think a lot of people are kind of wondering what the use cases are because they're treating it as, oh, it's just a little note-taking app that records my voice and this and this and this and this. Yeah, that's step one. That's the first step of the evolution. But rapidly we're going to see more and more applications, a lot of which are truly exciting. By the way, if you enjoy science fiction books and you haven't read The Player of Games, I highly, highly suggest you do. I used to read a lot of sci-fi books back in the days. I somehow missed this one. It just didn't appear on my radar for some reason. Recently, I got it as an audiobook on Audible and it was just phenomenal. But in that book, and I forget the exact terminology that they use, they, they always have their pin or however that thing was affixed to them that connected them to the hub, this great artificial super intelligent brain in the sky, because they all kind of came to rely on its help quite a bit, right? If they were in the wilderness, they hurt themselves, it could help them out. If they had questions, it could help them out. If there was an emergency and somebody was looking for them, it could connect them. And certainly in that book, they made it seem very beneficial, very cool. I'm sure there's another book where it's a complete nightmare. But I can't help but feel a little bit excited about what the next evolutions of these wearable devices will bring, especially when you think about it, combining it with massive improvements and these AI models, right? When we get to level GPT-5, GPT-6, GPT-7, the things that these little devices will be able to do for us in real time will grow and expand. But right now, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, this first wave of devices is not getting a very good reception, or at least this particular device called the Humane Pin. It's this little pin. It costs 700 bucks plus some monthly fee, 29 bucks a month or whatever it is. And so in that video blows up. It's, it's huge. He pinned it as the number one video on the channel. And some people, you know, had concerns about how ethical it was to do this. And of course, the vast majority of people do not agree with that take. They're saying that it's his responsibility to provide reviews. It's not his responsibility to consider how well the company's going to do afterwards, uh, etc. And look, I 100% agree. I think that he's doing his job, what he's supposed to do, right? He's reviewing products. He's giving his honest opinion. If he also has to consider how that's going to affect the company, not only is that going to water down the content, it's going to lose his credibility because that's not why people watch him. You know what I mean? Like they, they want his opinion. If the product is bad, we want to know it's bad. If it's good, we want to know it's good. We don't want this kind of you know, thing where he's like, well, do your duty and, and still buy it because we support this company. That's obviously nonsense. And I certainly agree that he has not only just the right to review the products, honestly, as he sees fit, but also the ethical obligation to his audience to provide the best possible content, honest opinions. That's, that's his job and nothing else. You know, with that said, I do feel like the smaller companies, I'm not talking about the humane AI pin here. This isn't really about them, but the smaller AI companies that get their product out there, that take big risks and try to be innovative. We do have to celebrate that a little bit. We have to give them some extra push because they're the underdog. If they're going up against the likes of Apple, right? These companies that are greater than nations, right? With unlimited funding, right? I think they have massive stores of cash. They have global supply chains. They have hundreds of millions of customers, right? So they have basically every single advantage when it comes to developing these products, right? When a brand new company comes out, tries to create something innovative, a first version of something, oftentimes that first version is clunky, it's expensive. And for the average consumer, it's horrible. The average consumer does not want to deal with it. When the Vive headset was coming out, like a lot of people were complaining about it, right? The it's it's big, it's clunky, it's got wires. You have to have these little base stations set up the around the house, basically. You kind of had almost had to have your own room for the VR setup. For the average consumer, this thing was just overpriced, garbage, unusable, etc. The first cell phones were huge, clunky. They worked very, very poorly. They were insanely expensive. 
right? When the Tesla Roadster came out in 2005, right? It was insanely expensive, you know, as well over a hundred thousand and the comparable gasoline powered car was 42,000. And I'm sure it had tons of problems that, you know, the regular cars didn't have because they already had time to kind of iron out all the kinks, etc. And all that is to say this, and this has nothing to do with Marcus Brownlee or the humane pin. The point here is that this new technology that's rolling out, these new AI wearable devices, the first versions that are going to hit the market, they're going to suck. They're going to be really expensive. And for the average consumer, they're not going to make any sense. It's, it's just not going to be the thing that the average person will use. The people that will buy this stuff will be the early adopters. The people that could shell out 120000 on the electric Tesla Roadster. The people that could pay tens of thousands of dollars for the first, you know, cell phone. It would be like this expensive headset that you need a whole room for, and that's super clunky. And whenever I notice they have pictures of it, they always hide the wires. This thing, you're wired to the wall. Like, they always try to hide it. This is what that looks like. This is probably the more honest looking one. You are you have this long cord that's running to your computer. But once the early adopters, once they or me, us, get their hands on it, right, well, we're willing to pay maybe a little bit more for stuff like this. We're willing to deal with the bugs and the issues and the clunkiness because we're excited about this technology. Those early adopters, they kind of, they fund the next round, the version 2.0s. Their feedback is used to improve that product. And then over time, like those early adopters by being huge of sums of money, like $700 per device and using it and giving the feedback, right? That, that money, that attention, that user feedback, creates the version two, version three, et cetera. And those get closer and closer to consumer grade. And then eventually the iPhone of that technology comes out, whatever iPhone will be for those devices. And people are like, oh, I get it. Okay, this is cool, right? And then of course it becomes ubiquitous. Everybody has it, everybody's talking about it. But I think it's important to understand that with AI wearables, we're not here yet. We're not at the iPhone you know, cell phones in 2007 or whatever it is. We're not even there yet. We're here. We're in 1973, the first phone, I guess the first cell phone, satellite phone, whatever. That's kind of where we are. Now I think that progress is going to go a lot faster. And the reason I say this is I think because these reviews of the Humane Pin, they kind of went viral. It became this thing for these various companies to dunk on the Humane Pin, which I think is totally fine. I haven't used it, so I can't comment on how good or bad it is. It's, it sounds like it's not that great. My concern is the next round of these wearables that comes out, certain other publications that are maybe are not as, I just hope it doesn't become like this meme to kind of dunk on these AI devices for how bad they are because in the beginning they will be bad. The person behind the Rabbit R1, Jesse Liu, does a quick little kind of unedited test of the Rabbit R1, his device, versus the Humane AI pin just to see how they compare. Here's a quick clip from that video. You have to like tap it and then find the laser. And this needs to be practiced, right? So like right now it's, it's here and uh, you need to kind of like unlock the device. And uh, again, I'm borrowing my colleagues. So I'm, I know this is a temporary password. So six, five, uh, four, four, three. Okay, so you can see it's unlocked. So let's get rid of that. You, you do that, then you just go back to the main menu, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's the main menu. Um, I have to say that, you know, uh, it's readable and not super crisp, um, but I did take this to the outside under the sun uh, here in California, it's, it just washed out. Uh, you do need a little bit of practice to find, there you go, where the laser is. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it will introduce a little bit of fatigue, like if you're just trying to read a lot of text on here, because it also will project the text of the, the answer the response. Um, but I, I kind of like feel that it's a bit annoying for, I have to like unlock my pain uh, to do the Corazon password every single time. and. Uh, I feel like the, the, at least the selection of the cars is a bit too sensitive. So as you can tell from what I'm just trying to unlock the four digits. Uh, but let's, uh, uh, let's just start by some basic search and basic query. Well, I'm not gonna worry about the laser for now. Uh, on the device itself, you know, uh, I guess you do feel the, the temperature, you do feel the heat here. Uh, it's definitely not burning. It's not burning, but I have to say, like if you touch on the edge, it is quite hot. It is not warm, it's hot. And um, I'll, I'll see if I can feel the temperature like, really become unbearable during this whatever minute uh, shooting period. Uh, but the weight, I think the weight is is, is decent, uh, it, especially if you take out the battery booster. It's, the unit itself is super light, uh, which that's super good. But once you have the battery, you certainly feel something's here. Um, I'm wearing a basic heavyweight shirt. Um, one thing I realize, if you're standing up, no problem. But if you kind of like trying to bend your bend down like this, that become quite noticeable and quite weird because it, it drag your shirt right down here and down there. And if you have another coat, you have to 
take it out and put it back again. And I'd, I'd assume I haven't tested it out yet. I'd assume you have to like, go to the unlock again. Uh, so yeah, so let's get some basic tests. Okay, so I have my R1 here. Uh, obviously, we're going to start with the simple stuff, right? So let's ask, I mean, every smart device is the simple stuff is weather. So uh, before we go that, I want to make sure that both device is disconnected from the Wi-Fi. So on R1, this is the early test unit, so I have to shake like really, really heavy to get to the menu. And uh, so, yeah, you can see here uh, a whole bunch of settings. Wi-Fi is turned off. Let's just make sure uh, this guy is turned off on the Wi-Fi too. Turn off the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi disabled. Yeah, I feel it's neat that you can just do that to trigger the settings. Maybe we'll implement that on R1 as well. So uh, both devices now are disconnected with Wi-Fi. We're in the uh, Mario office here, and it's, uh, I also say it's decent 4G signal, definitely not great. Uh, greatest, but uh, we'll start with the simple stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold both devices at the same time and release exactly at the same time because both devices kind of like push the top. There's no wake up worse. So let's give it a try. What's the weather here? Let me look that up. Finding current today, today April 15th, 2020. The current weather near 17 California is very high with a temperature below 47 degrees Fahrenheit and 16.4 degrees Celsius. So there's a low chance of precipitation and the UV index is low. Okay, so on that simple test, uh, both Arwa and uh, you may be able to search the correct answer. Um, there might be uh, some other thing. It might be one one point five seconds faster or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but it's not. It's not like it's not like super slow, super fast. Uh, you know, both devices. Um, let's try something more advanced. So, what is the main gas of the planet Saturn? The main gas of the planet Saturn is hydrogen. Finding Saturn gas. The main gas of the planet Saturn is hydrogen, making up ninety four percent of the composition. That's like what four five four five seconds. Yeah. Okay. What is the most popular sport in Finland? The most popular sport in Finland is ice hockey. Ice hockey I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The country producing many talented players who have excelled uh, in international competitions. Okay. I think this is being concise with the experience this morning, um, which both of you guys are here, right? Mm -hmm. I are here. Yep. So sometimes it registers the question, and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, another weird thing that I realized about my experience is that when you press it, it doesn't make the sound. When you release it, it makes the sound. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I would like to hear a sound. When you really when you press it, so you know that it's doing. You know it's start recording yeah. instead of playing a beep at the end of the the thing. Um, Finally, let's take a look at this actual limitless pendant. What the announcement video really contains, and kind of break it down and go through it step by step. Because again, while these devices are brand new, they're still being developed. Each new generation will have an answer to the previous generation's problems. Certain new improvements and tweaks based on the feedback from those early adopters. Try to notice how many times in this video. They almost kind of take these subtle shots at the humane pin in the features that they kind of highlight. The things that the humane AI pin missed, the things that they are kind of like improved on. Let's take a listen. I've got something really exciting to show you. Allow me to introduce you to the Limitless Pendant. Big difference here, I think, also doesn't have a camera. So this is just voice, audio. There's no laser projection like the Humane Pin has. This whole thing looks very similar to the Android watch for the Pixel phones. It looks like the exact same button, the exact same cord. The, I mean, this whole thing is, is very similar to it. Today we're introducing Limitless. It is a web app, a Mac app, a Windows app, and a wearable. Limitless is a personalized AI powered by what you've seen, said, or heard. Limitless augments, not replaces, human intelligence with artificial intelligence to overcome the brain's limitations, specifically our memory and our focus. Our brains are bombarded with notifications and information. Multitasking is a myth. We can only really do one thing at a time. I'm in back-to-back -back meetings, and I want to be 100% focused on the person I'm meeting with. Taking notes, tracking action items, and preparing for the next meeting all prevent me from connecting with the person right in front of me. Limitless automates all of this for you and more. It integrates seamlessly with all the technology you already use. Again, it's a web app, a Mac app, a Windows app, and a wearable. Let me show you. This is the Limitless web app. 
What you're looking at is the actual prep Limitless created to help prepare me to make this announcement video. It uses the context of my past, summarizes it, and gives me super helpful tips at a glance. It reminds me that my co-founder Brett previously provided feedback on presentation style, emphasizing the importance of making eye contact with the camera, occasional blinking, not talking too fast, and being oneself unless it involves bad puns and silly accents. Thanks, Brett. I'll try to avoid bad puns. Bad puns are a pun-ishment I wouldn't wish on anyone. This is a great example of how a personalized AI powered by what you've seen, said, or heard can take things off your plate. Next, let's look at the real-time transcript. Here, everything I've said was recorded and transcribed by Limitless. There's a lot to read here, and when you're in the middle of a meeting, it's tough to scan. Wouldn't it be great if this was synthesized into real-time notes? Well, that's exactly what Limitless offers. Here are real-time notes generated for me. Lastly, we generate a summary after the recording is done. I'll come back to that at the end of this video and show you what Limitless generated. Limitless is live right now. Head over to Limitless.ai and try it for yourself. Online meetings are a natural stepping stone toward real-world conversations. Wouldn't it be great to get all of the benefits I just shared, but for any conversation? That's why we built the Limitless Pendant. Let's put it on. You can wear it as a necklace or simply attaching it to your clothes using its magnetic clasp. It is truly the world's most wearable AI. It measures only 31.9 millimeters wide and 16 millimeters thin. Despite this small form factor, it has exceptional battery life. The Limitless Pendant will offer 100 hours of real world battery life without needing to swap battery packs throughout the day. This is one of the big things that the Humane AI pin was, there's like a lot of complaints about it saying that the battery life is very short. You constantly have to charge it. And certainly if it's got a camera and the laser thing and all of that stuff, then certainly yeah, you could see how that would run out of battery pretty fast. 100 hours or four days roughly. I mean, that's huge. That sounds really good. While it is recording, an LED is always visible. You can tap it to bookmark a moment or to ask your personalized AI anything. It has an array of microphones that ensure crystal clear audio quality, even in a crowded cafe. We support Bluetooth and Wi-Fi for seamless, reliable syncing, whether you have your phone with you or not. It does all of this and looks absolutely stunning. We're offering eight beautiful colors that will go with any outfit. Just as you wouldn't exercise without your fitness tracker, you won't want to work without your pendant. How much will the pendant cost? Just $699. That doesn't look right. Let's drop the six. Just $99. It's so again, another stab at Humane, which cost $699, which is what another big, big complaint was. That's a hefty price for something like that. We're offering this special price for a limited time only. We're proud to share that you can use the pendant without a recurring subscription. If you want unlimited AI features, we offer Limitless Pro, which costs $19 per month billed annually. Reserve your spot in line and order the pendant right now by visiting limitless.ai slash pendant. The first production units will ship this August. Now let's talk about privacy. Today, we're also announcing a major breakthrough in ensuring your privacy and the privacy of the people you meet with. Consent mode. I can see what his co-founder said about him blinking more. My eyes start hurting a little bit if he doesn't blink long enough. Possible for the first time ever to only capture the voice of people who have given consent to be recorded. It uses voice identification to determine who is speaking and verbal opt-in to make it frictionless to ask for consent. Let me show you how consent mode will work. Here I'm saying, hey Sam, it's great to catch up with you. Then Sam starts speaking, but because he hasn't given consent, we don't actually record it. Then I say, this meeting is really important to me and I really want to remember your advice. Are you okay if I record and transcribe our chat? He says, sure, no problem. We identify his voice and we know that because he said, sure, no problem, that is a verbal opt-in to giving consent. I say, thanks, I'll share the automatically generated notes and summary with you afterwards. It's as simple as that. That's the first announcement we're making today about privacy. But what about your data? Ad-driven companies like Facebook have tried to convince the world that convenience should come at the cost of privacy. When you use Facebook, you are the product, but not with Limitless. For the first time ever, you get all of the benefits of a personalized AI without sacrificing your privacy. The inspiration for our approach came from our existing product, Rewind. Unlike Slack, Zoom, or Gmail, Rewind runs locally, so your data is safe from your employer, the software provider, and from the government. But this approach has drawbacks. It isn't as convenient. You can't access your data from any device, you have limited storage, and it's challenging to offer the best AI models. Until today, 
Introducing the Confidential Cloud. Limitless delivers on the same privacy guarantees as Rewind, but with the convenience of being in the cloud. Unlike the traditional cloud, your employer, us as a software provider, and the government cannot decrypt your data without your permission, even if given a subpoena to do so. Only you control decryption of your data. So that's two major announcements around privacy, consent mode and confidential cloud. Visit limitless.ai to learn more about how confidential cloud works and to give it a try for yourself. As promised, let's go back and take a look at the summary that Limitless generated for this announcement. Here it is. There are sections for action items, key updates, priorities and challenges, and much more. Here you can see Limitless captured every time I asked you to take an action, like visiting limitless.ai to try the app. It also pulled out the key point that Limitless is designed to augment human intelligence without replacing it, and make special note of the introduction of consent mode and confidential cloud. And this is, of course, Limitless AI. So I haven't tried it yet. It sounds like it needs access to your microphone. I know sometimes if I'm recording, that creates an issue. I've had that happen once. It was very annoying. But it looks like you are able to get this for 99 bucks, And it's available right now. So I think he said as early as August. But if you want the fancy colors, that might be later. I don't know. I guess it's for any color. So they're saying shipping in the fourth quarter of 2024. So all in all, I'm pretty excited about these devices. Um, I don't expect them to be perfect from the get-go. With the Humane Pin, it does seem like they made a few missteps, maybe a few bad decisions in how they designed the product. One of the people behind the Humane Pin actually thanked Marcus Brownlee for his review of the product, saying that he gives them a lot of good feedback and they're going to continue to improve and try to make it better kind of one step at a time, which I think is a great attitude to have. I mean, I'm sure it probably uh, was difficult to hear that feedback. So this is Sam Schaefer. So he's uh, part of the Humane team and he's thanking Marcus Brownlee saying it's all fair. It's all valid critiques, both the good and the bad. The feedback is a gift. We reflect and we listen and we learn and continue building. But let me know what you think. Would you get something like this? Are you okay with being recorded 24 seven or at least potentially being recorded? Let's say if somebody else is wearing it while you're speaking to them. I mean, yeah, they say you're supposed to give your consent. Is that going to work 100% of the time? We don't know quite yet. You know, if you have one of those Google speakers or Amazon speakers, there are ways to find all the clips that they've recorded of you. And when I look at those, not every single time was I speaking to it? Maybe something that I said sounded like, hey, Google, or something like that. But there's some clips on there where I'm like, that's not supposed to be on there. So I think this is just the beginning of these devices, of all the various questions that have to be answered about kind of how society at large sees them, what is okay, what is not. The whole humane pin thing, if you're not aware, is kind of blowing up. There's a lot of strong emotions on both sides. We'll see where this whole thing goes as more and more of these devices hit the market. With that said, my name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.